What's up, DIY squad? In my house, we have this blank, boring, and basic room right off the front entry of our home. Our mission this week is to convert this uninteresting room into something amazing. If you couldn't tell by the title, we are going to build in an accent wall. We're going to do a board and batten wall that will go up about 60% of the wall height. We have 10 foot ceilings, so we felt it looked kind of weird to do a one third rule. If you don't know what that means, calm down, I got you. It seems like a lot of people, me included, struggle with proper height. So the rule of thirds means to build your batten up one third or two thirds of wall height, leaving one third or two third of the top of the wall blank. There's also this golden ratio you could use. This is what I use to determine our height. Just Google golden ratio calculator and you should be able to find it. With my 10 foot walls, this put the height of the top of the board at 74 inches, which in my opinion is perfect for this room. Now my wife and I wanted to visually see what this may look like before we fully jumped into it. This is why you see me putting up blue tape on the wall to help us visualize what this will actually look like. Once I got the thumbs up, I noted the measurements and began tearing it down. To officially begin this project, I start by removing the baseboards on the wall. Or one of the issues that we have right now is our walls are, are textured. Um, there's a couple ways we could go about fixing that. We could go, we could throw on some drywall compound, try to fill it all in. Getting it all cleaned up, sanded, smooth, you're gonna get dust all over your house. It's gonna make a huge mess. Or you could do what I'm gonna do um, and buy this 1 8 inch board. You can prime it, paint it, uh, put it up on the wall. The one thing that you do have to, have to keep in mind, you gotta try to find a way to hide the seams. Um, and so we're cutting these down so that the seams will be hidden right behind the boards that we're putting up on the, on the wall. I ripped down these masonite boards on this old pawn shop table saw. Don't judge, sometimes you have to get what you can afford while doing these projects. When ripping these down, I also measured where my plugs were located to cut them out as well. Just drill holes in the corners and cut them out with a jigsaw. I then used construction adhesive to attach them to the wall. Now, I've been told to apply the glue in kind of a loop pattern. When you push it up against the wall, the air will be pushed out of the loops and create a vacuum effect holding the board to the wall. I also nail the boards to the wall to hold it tight while the glue dries. As far as hold strength is concerned, the glue is actually the thing that's holding these to the wall. The nails are just there until the glue dries. It's important to mount the plug on the outside of the boards you just installed. If you leave it flush to the drywall behind the masonite, the plug will be depressed into the wall and you won't be able to get the plate on correctly. All right, so when it comes to this simple little tip, you don't need to use a knife to cut the tip of that. On a lot of these, they actually got a knife right in there. Just get that in, snip it off. They have a pin. Uh, that pin you can use to puncture. You're ready to go. I wasn't crazy particular about the masonite staying online because I knew I was putting a board over the top. So after it was up, I used this handy laser level to find my perfect line. I then mark out my stud locations and put up my first board. So I got the nail gun on the floor, try to balance. Uh, uh. our boards that we're putting on the wall, we're putting it at an inch and a half. So I ended up buying these at three inches because they were a lot cheaper to buy them at three inch pieces instead of one and a half inch pieces. Um, so I ended up buying one board and I could just rip them down to the size that I need. If you remember when I blue taped the wall, the measurements I took is what I'm using to place these planks in the same location. Make sure you use your level on each one of these boards. And as always, the boss wants to make sure I get this right. In all seriousness though, I really can't wait till he's old enough that I can do these kinds of projects with him. All right, one of the other things that we're gonna do in here is we're gonna actually case in the window. Now you can put your casing right on top of the drywall. I'm not going to, I've done that in the past, but what ends up happening is the drywall is never gonna be exactly the same distance on these gaps here. And then once I put that board material on top of this, there's no way to really shim it, get it level and all that fun stuff without it actually going up over this lip. I start by removing the edge banding. 
Then remove the drywall in the window frame. When installing the casing to this window, I nail in the top board first, then do the bottom board before I put in the sides. I do this so the boards on the side can help hold the top board in place. Also, I cut these boards about a sixteenth of an inch too long. With the boards being MDF, they fit in very tight. You just kind of wedge them in, bow them out at the center, nail in the top, nail in the bottom, and then press the center in, and you won't have to worry about gaps. Once the boards are installed inside the window, I then add the molding to the outside. Now there are so many ways you can design this. This is a craftsman style we are going with. I suggest you find your own style that meets your liking and go with it. There are three things I hate the most with any project. I hate painting, I hate sanding, and I hate putting patches and holes like you see me doing here. I'm so OCD that this takes so much longer for me to do than it really should. Now once it dries, I get the sand. Maybe if I say it excited, it will be more exciting. Nope, still sucks. I then wipe everything with a damp rag to get all the dust. Once that is done, I caulk all the edges to give everything a seamless look. I suggest keeping that damp rag to wipe any excess caulking. All right, new day. So what we have done so far is we've got the paneling all put in, nailed, glued. We did the caulking on all the edges. We've puttied in all the holes. And the same thing with the window. We've got the framing in, we've done the caulking, we've puttied all the holes. Basically, all that we have to do now is we will prime all this, we will paint all this. But before we do all that, we are going to be installing French doors. I had to install the French door after doing everything else because it was on back order. You know, the number one excuse of 2021. There's so much to installing a door that I dedicated an entire video to this. To see me install this exact door, you can click on the link at the top of the video. Now onto one of the most time consuming portions of this project, paint prep. I put plastic down all over the carpet as well. This stuff is only a few bucks, and I know if I don't put it down, I'm going to spill paint on the carpet, which will cost me more than a few bucks the plastic cost me. I'm to prime. I start out by hitting all the edges with a brush and then move to a paint roller. After the primer is dried, I get to do more prep. There are three different paint colors going in here and I get to tape off for each one. Now this is my favorite part of the job. When removing tape, pull it at a sharp angle. This will help prevent removing paint where the blue tape is attached. It's amazing just how much this paint can really bring this room to life. Now, if you enjoyed this video and would like to support this channel so I can keep bringing you fresh new content, please like and subscribe down below. It's completely free to you and keeps me churning out videos like this to hopefully help you in your next project. Now, there are just a couple things we need to do to button this up so you can truly see what we are doing with this room. So stay tuned for the next video where you get to see the final project.